running at with the reference clock and multiplier being used, along with the load on the CPU. When idling in Windows, the load will be very low because no CPU intensive programs are running. If we use Prime95 to give the system something to do, the load will increase. If you have Quiet and Cool enabled in your BIOS, and the balanced power settings enabled in Windows Vista or 7, when the CPU load lowers, the multiplier will automatically be lowered. Here the default is 16, and it's lowering down all the way to 4, slowing down the CPU and saving power. If we give the CPU something to do again, it will raise the multiplier, making the system run at full speed. While we're doing our overclocking tests, trying to get the CPU to run as fast as it can, we are going to disable these power saving features in the BIOS. This will make sure the stress tests we put the CPU through are very thorough. We want to put the CPU through the worst possible circumstances to make sure the overclock is stable. Having these power saving features on would give the CPU a break, and that's not what we want. After we reach our maximum stable overclock, we will turn the power saving features back on to save electricity and extend the CPU's life. Let's go back to Prime95. I'll click Options and go to Torture Test. And I want to choose the Blend option to stress both the CPU and RAM. This test is to confirm that our system is stable at stock settings. And to see how hot the CPU gets at stock settings. Our CPU has four cores. So Prime95 opens a window and runs the stress test on each core. If the test fails, changing these green icons red and gives an error in one of the windows, the system freezes, blue screens, or reboots. It means the system is unstable. If you walk away from the computer for a while and come back and it's just sitting at the desktop, it means the test failed and the system rebooted. The test has been running for 20 minutes. If we look at core temp, the maximum CPU temperature was 58 degrees C, and it's currently 55. This happened because by default, the CPU fan runs at a slower speed when the CPU temp is low. When the system detects higher temps, it speeds up the fan, dropping the temperatures. We're going to set the CPU fan to always run on high while we test. I'll write down the low and high temperatures at stock settings. To see how well the system is performing at stock settings, as well as an additional stability test, we're going to go back to Google. We're going to go to www.futuremark.com and click Benchmarks. 3D Mark Vantage is the newest version, but it only allows you to see one benchmark result before paying for the full version. Scroll down and find 3D Mark 06 and click Download. It runs in Windows XP, Vista, and 7. 3D Mark 06 will push the CPU to its limits and give us a benchmark we can use to compare the performance with the current stock settings to the performance after we overclock the CPU. This isn't necessary in overclocking the CPU, but it is interesting and satisfying to see the improvements. Once it downloads, just run the EXE and install it. We've already installed 3D Mark 06, so I'll launch it. I forgot and left Prime95 running. I'll stop that. Click Continue. And close the tip of the day. Before we run the benchmark, it's important to close down as many of the other running programs as possible. Even your browser can take 10 to 15% of the CPU's time, and this can affect the benchmark score. Whatever you do, just try and make sure the programs running are consistent between now and the next time you benchmark after you overclock to give as true a comparison as possible. The free version doesn't allow you to select just the CPU tests. So I'll run the standard benchmark. It tests the video card as well.
and in 3D Mark 06, this CPU score with stock settings is 4415, and I will make a note of that. Before we go into the BIOS to learn all about the overclocking related settings, we need to talk about BIOS upgrades. If your motherboard is using an early version of its BIOS, you may have trouble overclocking. Symptoms to watch out for are inconsistent results when you try to overclock. For instance, if you are trying to find your motherboard's fastest reference clock speed, and you think you found it, the system is stable, so you take a break for a few hours. If when you come back, the system isn't stable at that same reference clock speed, you might need a newer version of the motherboard's BIOS. It's probably best to go ahead and make sure you have the latest version. To find the latest version, you'll need to go to the motherboard maker's website. To find my motherboard, I'm going to do a search for the model number GA-790 XTA UD4. And here's a direct link to the product page. I'll click the BIOS link. If I scroll down, I can download the latest version. How you upgrade the BIOS varies by manufacturer. All motherboard manufacturers will let you upgrade the BIOS using a utility inside the BIOS. You either load the BIOS update from the folder you downloaded it to on your hard drive, or you can save the file onto a USB thumb drive and load the BIOS from there. Most motherboard makers also give you the option to update the BIOS while you're in Windows using an extra program you download from the motherboard maker's website. It's a good idea to make a backup of the current BIOS just in case you need to go back to it. Not all BIOS updates are good, so keep backups of each BIOS you're using, including the one that shipped on the motherboard, so you can go back to the last good BIOS version if you need to. In the next lesson, we will go into the BIOS, go over all of the overclocking-related settings, and prepare the BIOS for overclocking.